I want this project to be calm and peaceful. This is what the CTO of a company that I was coaching told me when I asked him, what is the dream? What is the ideal dream or outcome that you would li like to achieve? And when I prodded deeper into what do you mean by a project which is calm and peaceful, he told me about um, a lot of escalations which have been um, happening recently. Uh, and then he said, timely delivery, high quality, and a happy customer. These were his criteria for a calm and peaceful project. Now, I want to tell you what is the problem with aiming for timely delivery, high quality, and happy customer. Well, in a way, there's, there's no problem. There is uh, like almost everybody wants timely deliveries, high quality, and happy customers. I want to share this short video because this might be applicable to many of you listening. And this particular project involves uh, 30 odd people working on the project. Uh, and you know what, what happens with uh, uh, when we use language, especially vague language like timely delivery, high quality, and a happy, satisfied customer is that everybody, in, in this case, all 30 people would actually create some expectation, some model of what that means in their own head, in their own minds. They would create a version of what it means to have timely deliveries, a high quality and a happy customer. And the thing with human beings is that, right? We listen to the same words, but we make different meanings out of it. So unless you get very clear, and this is what I told you, right? What are the top three outcomes that you want? I asked him, what are the top three outcomes that you want that nobody can debate on? That is crystal clear, written down uh, in numbers. In fact, nobody can form different expectations when we talk about numbers, when we talk about SLAs, when we talk about uh, like a client saying yes to me. And nobody can argue that. But a happy customer, timely delivery, all of these are very vague statements and it is very difficult to uh, to make a project successful is this is what you're counting upon right so we talked about the importance of being clear and specific in our language especially as leaders and at least for me the way i see it now vague language is a sign of missing leadership right and it is leadership which goes into and challenges anytime you see a vague language being used either by yourself or by anybody in your team and to challenge that person or, or, and that team to get a very clear, detailed outcome of what it means. What it means to have a happy customer. What does it mean to have timely deliveries? What are those numbers which we can see, which we can measure, which we can observe, which we can improve upon, which we can practice, and which we can actually, at the end of a duration, a time duration, say that whether we hit it or not, right? In the end, it should be a very clear a yes and no or a red and green outcome, rather than like half of the team thinking, yes, we delivered on time, and the half of the team thinking, oh, we could have done better or having different expectation between the client and the customer, right? Because expectations only leads to frustration. Expectation only leads to disappointments because expectations are different for everybody else. Rather than having a very clear set of numbers which have been agreed upon by everybody who is involved with the project. Now then there cannot be any doubt. And he was facing a lot of escalations and I asked him, right, could this be the reason? Could this be a sign of missing leadership? Could be this be a a sign of an intervention that is required now for him to take this project to that calm and peaceful state that he wanted to do. Eventually what we end up doing was we end up breaking down the project into three very specific milestones which can be measured in numbers and then we broke that down, uh, broke those numbers down into an yearly basis and then into a quarterly basis and then even further into a sprint basis which was at that point every 15 days for this person. Over the next one week what this person did was it conversations with both the client as well as their internal team of 30 people, right? There were four team leads reporting to this person who were uh, leading this total set of 20, 20, 30 people. And he broke, first of all, he communicated um, and he came up with then again revised numbers, which everybody can put their, everybody can go behind, everybody can pull their weight behind and then had an agreement with the client that this is what we are promising for the year, this is what we are promising for the quarter, this is what we are prom promising for each sprint. Now, as soon as everybody was aware of what was the project level three outcomes, uh, which would make a project successful, uh, and then how that uh, broke down into quarters and then into each sprint, everybody was very clear on what they were required to do. In fact, the four of the team leads that were reporting to this CTO also went down and did the same exercise with their teams so that in the end, you can have a very clear dashboard saying whether this project and each of these three outcomes is happening according to plan or not. Right? And this is a yes and no answer. This is not an answer to be answered by stories or explanations. You can very easily set up a dashboard where you can see each of these three outcomes and then you can break it down into sub teams if you have a large project. And you can see in the end whether each of these outcomes is red or green at any given point. If it is green, then that means everything is on plan. Everything is on track. But if it is red, then you mean that something is missing and maybe there is an intervention. Maybe there is a change which is required then. 
another thing which uh, this person mentioned was uh, a happy customer or a satisfied customer. And I asked him, right, how often have you asked the customer if he, if they are satisfied or not? And the answer was never or rarely, unless the customer came up with uh, with escalations or complaints or positive feedback. There was no formal frequency of or rhythm of conversations which were happening. Uh, and then another thing which uh, we did because happiness or satisfaction is such a intangible thing, right? But you have to make it tangible. So what this person did was to have a simple 15 minutes call every week with the customer who would be his counterpart in terms of delivery and a 15 minute call every week simply to ask, are you happy and satisfied with what we are doing given the dashboard, right? So given the dashboard, which will make it very clear, what is the progress? Where are we moving forward? Where are we lacking behind? And what are our promises for each sprint? And then on a larger level, on a quarter and yearly level, are you satisfied? Are you happy? Is there something missing either with me or with my teams? Is there something we can improve? Simply a 15 minute conversation every week just to measure what he said was the main outcome, right? A happy and satisfied customer, which it was it was all in expectations. I want a happy customer, but I've never actually asked, are you happy? Are you satisfied? And can you share what is making you unhappy? What can we improve? What is missing from that level of satisfa satisfaction to be absolutely 100%? Unless you have these conversations and I get it, especially if you are, if you have a young team, if you have missing up, you kind of wait for when things get better or when things get smooth to have these conversations. Because many of these conversations can bring up challenges or become difficult conversation. But that is a sign of missing leadership. Leaders do not wait when things are fully functional or smooth to have conversations. Leaders jump into the conversation because they know that the conversations, the difficult conversations, will actually help them deliver what they promised, will actually help them create calm and peace in a project. So they don't shy away from what they know is required, but might be uncomfortable for them. Now, apart from this one conversation with, uh, with the customer, we also came up with many other conversations that also needs to happen on a regular basis to make sure that uh, the project is successful. And earlier, most of these conversations were not happening or they were left to chance. They would happen if somebody remembered them. One of those conversations was freezing the sprint requirements before the sprint start. And to have this in the calendar, to have this conversation set up in the calendar so that everybody knows that this is an expectation that the sprint has to be locked before the sprint starts. A second conversation is a team conversation about how was our previous sprint? What can we learn? What feedback can we do to improve? A third conversation was on a weekly level or maybe two or three times a week level is just the whole team getting together and very quickly in 10 to 15 minutes going through the dashboard, right? Which is simply red or green, simply red or green and making sure that everybody is on track and offering help and support if somebody or a particular area of a project is missing out. And what this conversation does is, first of all, it makes everybody aware of the status, right? So that there are no surprises, even if the whole dashboard is red, and it's still better than not seeing the dashboard, which is red eventually, right? And uh, by having the conversation, you bring the whole team together and you actually give them a chance to contribute, to help, to support each other. And that builds team spirit, that builds a rhythm, that builds momentum, not just for this project, but also for the long term. So two things which I want you to take away from this short video is, one is that very clear and specific numbers in what will make this successful. This could be for small projects, this could be for large projects. But very clear, specific numbers, not better, Ibru, high quality, um, happy, whichever way you can find to make it measurable, make it observable, so that you can actually do something about it. Unless you put a number to it, it's very easy to people to get two different interpretations and that only leads to frustration, stress, repeated work, wasted work, and let me not even talk about emotional energy just so often wasted between frustration and stress. And the second thing which I want anybody to take away is to have that rhythm of conversations, right? Whether it is daily, whether it is weekly, whether it's once a monthly or once a quarterly, what is that rhythm of conversation that you need to have to make this a success? And then to put it in the calendar, then to make it non-negotiable. Then there should not be any way to get out of it because otherwise what you're doing, the project, the big impact that you're making is at stake, right? And all of this, if it is missing, is a sign of missing leadership. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing bad with that. This happens all the time. But at the same time, this is an opportunity to learn. This is not a place to look, point fingers either at ourselves or somebody else and say, you're not a good leader or I'm not a, I'm not a good leader. But to simply say, this is an opportunity to learn and grow. And let me make this simple change to do so. Thank you.